Hi friends, it's Nathan, a second year pharmacy student studying at the University of Waterloo, but currently doing a hospital placement in the surgery department. Welcome to my channel, welcome back to my channel. If you like my content and personality, please subscribe and follow me on Instagram and TikTok. All of my social media will be linked in the description box below. For today's video, I wanted to talk about finding your learning style and then using it to maximize productivity and success. Every student learns differently. And unfortunately in our education system, it's really only catered to one specific type of learner. And that's why it's so important to know your style and how you can develop personalized strategies, study strategies to maximize effectiveness. Whether that's taking a lecture and converting it into a mind map, or maybe just the lecture on its own works well for you. Maybe you need to write down the steps of how to do a calculus question to understand the methodology, or maybe you need to touch your hand to remember the bone anatomy of it. Whatever your learning style is, if you want to learn specific study strategies that are catered to your unique style, then keep on watching. And of course, this video will be divided into chapters so that you can easily go to whichever section is applicable to you. Bark. So there are four different types of learners. We have visual learners, auditory learners, reading slash writing learners, and lastly, kinesthetic learners or bark. And this was coined by Fleming and Mills in 1992. Most people will have a combination of these styles, but there will always be a dominant type. Visual learners prefer to see their information in diagrams and charts. For example, glycolysis in the form of a flow chart would work really well for these types of students, and whiteboards are definitely their favorite. Auditory learners like to hear or speak the information. So things like lectures, group discussions, audiobooks, are very effective for these type of students. Reading slash writing learners like their information to be in the form of words. So textbooks and novels and journal articles are what they're most comfortable with. Lastly, kinesthetic learners like to practice or experience the information. Things like demonstrations, videos, case studies, applications of the material to real life scenarios, that's what they like. If you don't know what your learning style is, don't worry. I have linked the BARC questionnaire in the description box. You can complete it and it'll tell you what your dominant type is as well as what your scores are for the other three modalities. Because like I said, everyone's kind of on a spectrum and we all have a combination of each style. We just have a dominant one, of course. Even if you think you know what kind of learner you are, I highly recommend giving it a go again because people change and sometimes what you think you are may not necessarily be the case. I'm a kinesthetic dominant learner. However, I wouldn't say kinesthetic is my most used study strategy. And that's just because pharmacy school doesn't really allow for it as much. I find myself using all of the styles. So auditory and reading slash writing would be used for learning the high volume information that accompanies a pharmacy school, but then I would be using visual and kinesthetic strategies for my clinical skills, especially my OSCEs. Once you figure out what your learning style is, you want to take a look at your studies and see how your style fits with what you're learning. Certain subjects like English literature will be more targeted towards reading slash writing learners, but that doesn't mean you can't use auditory techniques to learn your information. It's very adaptable, it's very flexible, and over the next four chapters of this video, I will be going through my study strategies for each type of learner so that you can take them and adapt them and use them to your benefit. But before we get into each style, I want to tell you about DataCamp who has kindly sponsored today's video. DataCamp is an online learning platform that teaches you data skills conveniently and to anyone. With courses for all different levels, both beginners and pros can benefit and get new knowledge. DataCamp has over 350 data science courses and they're all designed by top experts. I developed a basic knowledge of R back in a statistics class in undergrad. And since learning that basic introductory knowledge, I've been able to apply it to my research, to my data analysis, and my preceptors have been very impressed with my working knowledge. However, I didn't get to take any more advanced classes because my schedule didn't allow it. But with DataCamp now, I can continue developing my R knowledge and I highly recommend any STEM student get familiar with this language because it is used all the time for research. DataCamp also has courses in Python and SQL and if you don't know where to start, 
they have a free assessment tool that will give you personalized class recommendations. Another really cool thing about this platform is that it provides a gamified experience, meaning once you complete levels, you'll get XP points. And this is all done on a browser. You don't need any additional software. Computer science and coding is becoming so valuable these days. And having that skill on your resume or on your CV can unlock so many career opportunities. And with Data Camp, you can become data fluent. If you want to level up your data skills, click the link in my description box and check out the first chapter to any course for free. Thank you, Data Camp, and let's continue on with the video. Visual learners. If you need to learn a process, flowcharts are your best friend. Let's say you need to memorize the glycolysis pathway. Start with your first product and then do an arrow, next product, arrow, next product, and just continue on. And if you do this over and over again, you will eventually be able to see that diagram. You'll be able to see that process in your head. And even if you can't see it in your head in that way, if you have an exam, get your exam and then immediately flip it over on the back page, draw out the whole diagram because you already have it in memory. And then you'll have a little cheat sheet on your exam. Flowcharts also work very well if you need to remember the storyline of a plot. Because flowcharts work in a chronological order, and our brain likes order, it allows us to keep it very straight and very clear. I also love using T-charts to highlight similarities and differences. So having two topics at the top, a line in the middle, and then just going over ideas, compare and contrast. And because you see the physical line, it allows yourself to keep it very clear and you won't have any confusion between similar processes, similar ideas, and it just keeps it very straight. This is also a great way to test yourself. So again, having those titles at the top and trying to list all those similarities and differences without looking at any resources is a great way to see if you actually know your content. Auditory learners, say your notes aloud. If you guys have seen any of my study vlogs or finals vlogs, you know that I speak aloud and I will link them above if you haven't seen them. But when I do my Anki cards, I will verbalize my answer before flipping and revealing the card. And I do this because when you need to verbalize an answer, you need to come up with the sentence. You need to think about it. And your brain is more engaged when you have to verbalize something rather than just thinking the thought in your head. The action of forming a coherent answer aloud means that you actually understand the material. Also, the more senses you activate, the more it's committed to memory. So when you're speaking aloud, you are seeing the material, you are speaking the material, you are hearing the material. That's three chances for your brain to process that content, thus allowing for better memory. If you're interested in my unconventional yet effective Anki technique that allows me to memorize anything for my exams in two days, definitely click the link above. I made a video on it and it's a good one. I also like to teach the material like a lecture almost. One, I think it's really fun to do so. But two, if you can teach the material, you understand the material. If you're not able to teach it, then maybe you need to do some reviewing, become more familiar and comfortable with these concepts. Reading slash writing learners. If you are reading a textbook or a novel, I highly recommend annotating or taking down notes. Reading is great for understanding. And I'm ending the full stop there. Reading is great for understanding, but that's about it. Back in undergrad, when I had to take a liberal arts class, our prof was telling us that 15% of the exam would be from the textbook. And I would read the textbook just light reads uh, a few days before the exam just to supplement my information from the lectures and also maybe just to cover some information that's new but i did that just to understand material it was only 50 percent of the exam and reading it was adequate but if i needed to actually know the information to memorize the information in the textbook then i would have to use the second part of the r in bark and that is the writing component when you're writing notes please condense 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 the process of reading information processing it and then summarizing it is learning at its finest you really can't summarize something that you don't understand and i would take a full lecture slide and condense it to 
maybe four or five bullet points and each bullet point would only have five words max. That's what condensing means. That's what summarizing is. And when you have those condensed notes, studying and memorizing becomes way, way easier. Kinesthetic learners. Sometimes the information in a lecture or textbook just isn't clicking with you, and that's when you head over to YouTube to find a video. Seeing an actor play Macbeth can help you really understand the character in a way that reading the play on its own could not have. Likewise, watching a virtual simulation of a heart pumping can help you understand heart anatomy way better than if you were just to read about the ventricles and the atriums in a textbook. Oftentimes, if I don't understand something, I'll instantly find a video on it and the video just clears up all the confusion and it usually does the job. Another part of kinesthetic learning is practice. So for my clinical skills, specifically patient interviewing, I will ask a friend or a classmate to pretend to be a patient and then we'll role play through a consultation. It's one thing to know the disease and it's another to be able to evaluate the patient's signs and symptoms and then come up with a diagnosis, which is what you'll be doing at the end of the day, not so much answering a multiple choice question on an exam. Therefore, being able to take your knowledge and applying it to real world scenarios is critical regardless of whatever field you're entering. Another method is to work through case studies. Now, you can ask your teacher for case studies, you can ask, search the internet for case studies. Case studies are everywhere, but case studies, again, allow you to take information you've known, you've learned, and apply it to scenarios. And this is a great way to prepare right before your exams because most likely your exams will have these application style cases uh, and questions. And again, it'll be great for the workforce because that's what your day-to-day -day is gonna look like. And there you have it, VARC. I hope you found my study techniques for visual, auditory, reading slash writing, and kinesthetic learners helpful. It's very important that you play to your strengths, but also to be adaptable. Like I said earlier, some subjects are just better catered to certain students, but that doesn't mean that just because you're not a visual learner, you can't reap the benefits of diagrams and flowcharts. Yes, you absolutely can. And I gave you a bunch of my strategies and techniques that you can take into your study toolbox so that you can use them when needed, depending on whatever class it is, whatever lesson it is, being able to really mold it for whatever your study needs are. And if you have these strategies in your toolbox, you will be able to maximize productivity and success, depending on the type of learning you are, but also the type of content that is being thrown at you. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to give it a like. Let me know in the comments what kind of learner you are and and which study strategy you're interested in trying. If you want more study advice, hospital vlogs, study vlogs, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon because I post a new video every Tuesday at 11 a.m. EDT. And if you want more day-to-day -day content, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Nathan.Wu. And for more funny, relatable student slash healthcare content, follow me on TikTok at It's Nathan Wu. But that's it for me, and I'll see you friends in the next video. Bye.